We would like to acknowledge that this podcast was recorded on the lands of the Wurundjeri and Boon people of the Kulin Nation. We value their cultures, identities, and continuing connection to country, waters, kin, and community. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. James. Yes, Richard. James. Listen, Richard. mate. This is important, all right? Talk to me. The hamster dance went viral. Furby was the best toy. Bill Gates got a pie thrown at his face in Brussels. Dr. Dre signed an unknown rapper called Eminem. It was the first time we saw snowboarding at the Winter Olympics. The year was 1998. I'm Rich. I'm James. We watched The Truman Show and Fatal Deviation. And that's popcorn. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Their behavior not good. You're stop you now, right there. Because... <laughs> the Swamp Dees. One lamb kebab. I'm abandoned my child! Now, give me money. So tell me who sent you. Listen, mate, this is important. I, I thought you were real. That's popcorn. That's popcorn. That's good. I I like um, that the hamster dance went viral. Yeah. And we 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 thought that was. That was the worst thing that could possibly happen. The hamster dance went viral pre um, Google, which is pre YouTube. How did people even find it? How did things go viral back then? I don't know, but it was better than how they go viral now. Am I right? Am I right? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Hey, James. How are you? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm good. I'm good, Richard. Oh, fuck how, are you? how are you? I have like no sleep. All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome again to That's Popcorn. As I said in the intro, I'm Rich. I'm James, James, James. James, James, James. Fatal James. Street. James. Fatal James. De- deviation. <laughs> the James Show. Uh, welcome to That's Popcorn. This is where we watch uh, a really good loved uh audience loved critic loved film from a year and then from the same year we watch the opposite something that's panned hated um despised uh and this and this this week <laughs> this episode <laughs> i just became like and this pig. <laughs> <laughs> well that's all folks <laughs> i um, hope you enjoyed this episode it's been it's been about two minutes uh yibbity yibbity <laughs> oh it's gonna be an hour of just me giggling because i haven't had enough sleep anyway uh this episode we watched the truman show and fatal deviation what would you like to start with? I, uh, I have a lot to say about both. I um yeah, I, I do as well. I think I think maybe we should start on a very high note, uh, and 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 discuss the Truman Show. Um, <laughs> I did not know if that was where you were going. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely where I was going. There's 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 no room for jokes about the quality of the films that we watched this this week. <laughs> <laughs> all right so well, let's let's well, let's get let's, truman let's, let's jump into the truman show before we do that let's watch the trailer the comments are still headed what else is on yeah let's do what else First. coming to you now from the largest studio ever constructed it's the truman show yeah good morning good morning Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> what if? No scripts, no cue cards. Morning, Spencer. How's it going? What if you were watched every moment of your life? How many cameras you got there in that town? 5,000. I believe Truman is the first child to have been legally adopted by a corporation. That's correct. Brilliant. What if everyone you knew was pretending? Hi, honey. 
me? Look what I got at the checkout. Dishwasher safe. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. What if your world was make-believe? Cue the sign. While the world he inhabits is counterfeit. I'm not allowed to talk to you. That's how I look. Not your type. There's nothing fake about Truman himself. What if you didn't know it? Until now. A lot of strange things have been happening. Stand by ring cam. Is he looking at us? Does he think he knows? I think I'm mixed up in something. Something big. Oh. We accept the reality with which we're presented. Everybody's pretending, Truman. Get out of here. Come and find me. Truman? Truman! Truman! No. Mm -hmm. You may find yourself in another part of the world. It's like the whole world revolves around me. Everybody seems to be in on it. I'm going away for a while. You may tell yourself, this is not my beautiful wife. You may ask yourself, how did I get here? I'm not in on it, Truman, because the last thing that I would ever do is lie to you. Fade up music. That's our hero shot. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> Find him. Truman, where are you going? You can do it. How do we stop him? Give me some light. Is that the best you can do? Cut transmission. I like your pen. I was wondering that myself. Jim Carrey. The Truman Show. Watch what happens. You're going to What a good trailer that was that we definitely oh. watched. Oh, just... <laughs> Man, it's like being there. <laughs> the Truman Show. Uh, this is fresh in my mind because we just watched it last night. Good. Um, I love it. I hadn't seen it in so long and I forgot how brilliant it is. It's it's so good. It's just a happy film. It doesn't matter. I think I've seen this movie like, it'd be like 30 times. Like a lot. If it's on TV, I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to sit down and watch this. Um, and then I'll make an effort to watch it it's like a, a family film i watch it with my family quite a bit i think i saw it at the cinema with my family oh yeah um it's got lots of nice memories and every time i watch it i like it still gets to the end and even though i know what's gonna happen i'm like ah get all a flutter yeah and it's interesting because um they could have gone a completely different way with this film i read that that they actually did want to have a, a very, like a much darker mm. film. It's going to it's gonna be like set in New York or something. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to be like, um, yeah, I think Peter Weir said he didn't want it in New York because it seemed too sci-fi, which is interesting because yes. like it's the same year that Dark City came out and um, similar films and stuff, you know, with that kind of sci-fi, the world is fake. The Matrix was soon like coming yeah. up later. Um, but yeah, it could have been a lot darker, but it's interesting because a lot of films like this, it's usually set around the point of view of like the protagonist and the audience doesn't know that it's a mm. fake world, but this from the get start, from the, from the get start, is that a thing? <laughs> from, the, <laughs> from, from get smart, <laughs> this from get smart has 99 <laughs> reasons. Um, <laughs> this from the top is, uh, like, you know, that he's living in a a false world, I guess. Yeah, and it does it does do a really good job of world building, not only like building Truman's world that he is in, but also the world of the people that watch this show. Yeah. Yeah. Like even even those characters are, are quite fun. Yeah. It's like the the guy watching it in his bath and given <laughs> yes. it like it flashes to the guy in the bath quite a bit. And given how long that this movie is sort of set over, like it must be like a month of time. Is he been in the bath for a month? Yeah, he's a wrinkly boy. That, he's he's been wrinkly. Was... It's it's actually an eleven year old child who's he's actually... been in, who's been in the bath for a month. <laughs> he's actually been in the bath since the start of the entire show, and he because he wanted to emulate Truman as a baby, but then he just loved right. it so much he just stayed in the bath. Just yeah, that's that's a whole movie there. <laughs> the Bath Boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think like I think any other way they could have made the Truman Show, 
um, would have been a bad decision and you would have got hung up on all the little things like, well, why didn't like the actors just do this? And that doesn't make any sense. How does this happen? This happened. But the way that the Truman Show is made where it's sort of, it's sort of like a fairy tale, mm. you don't, you don't ask those questions. You don't yeah. sort of get too involved in like how realistic it could be. You just get, you just fall in, in, in love with the plot and you're just like, I, I love this. This is great. Yeah. You don't question like the reality, which is kind of interesting because he's questioning the reality, but you don't question the reality of the film within yeah. the film. Um, like, you know, when he, when he opens actually, preface spoilers for the Truman Show and Fatal Deviation. I don't know if you can spoil Fatal Deviation, but we'll get to that. Uh, um, they did a good job of that. <laughs> but like, you know, when he goes to the lift and it opens up and he sees the whole behind the scenes, um, or even at the start when he sees like the light falling from the from the ceiling, as it were, uh, like there's enough things in there to make you feel to make him question like faster. <laughs> but you yeah. don't kind of, you don't, you don't, you like you go with the journey. You don't go. You know, wow. Of course, of course, it's fake, mate. But I mean, put yourself in that situation. The idea that your whole life is a TV show is just so far removed from something that could potentially be real. Well, at least in 1998. Now I'm not so sure. <laughs> says, um, says us filming a conversation. <laughs> So that we can put it <laughs> on the internet. That's, it. that's, it. that's what the reboot of the Truman Show is. Two yep. people who find out their entire life's a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, it's, uh, it's, it's great. I, I, I wouldn't, um, I, I know that the, like, this film, there's now sort of a, a psychological condition which has been named the Truman Syndrome. The Truman Show syndrome, which is people who think that they are on television. Mm. Um, I can't think of many other films that have created something like that, and such happy films as well. Like, all right, all right, I, I'm going to pose you a question, Richard. If you found out your life was a TV show and everything was made for you, and everyone around you was actors, yeah. Would you go for it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of be like, who's writing this? <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> yeah, a global this... pandemic? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah this, yeah, this is, yeah, season Donald 20 Trump? has gone garbage. <laughs> yeah, that, that cameo from Trump. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Like, clearly the, the, um, the Writers Guild just shut down for the last 10 years. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think look, look, there's been there's been situations where I've gone, yeah, this is someone's someone's pranking me. Like people are people are watching this. There's there's so many like things for me to be in this situation. It kind of just happened naturally. Someone has planned this. <laughs> um, generally, not it's just usually yeah. my own stupid decision making. But and it was it was, it was Ed Harris. Too, actually, it was Ed Harris. Ed Harris. I, I, I posit. I like to, you know, I like to join two films together. But I'd like to propose that uh, Ed Harris in this film is the same Ed Harris in Westworld, and that the Truman uh, Show is just another world within. Uh, is it Davos or whatever it's called? The Westworld yes. place. So you got Westworld. You got uh, the yeah. samurai world. Yep. Then and... you've got Truman World. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh yeah I like I like that idea and uh get on board with that where you know you could go into this virtual reality and it's just a little town in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> except everyone's <laughs> robots except for one dude who is Jim Carrey. Yeah. Um, but it's not you. You just go in this virtual world and you just play an extra. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like oh here we go can't wait to get on the bus. Oh, they should have made a Truman show video game. Where you're just like trying to set up the area to not full, or actually too full Truman, um, right? So he doesn't, you know, his whole world doesn't shatter in front of him. You can have yeah. a, you can have a truth meter, and the more it goes up, 
Yeah, yeah, that's that sounds sounds like a nice idea. Did did you read the article that I did about how a lot of people think it's sort of an allegory for Christianity? No. See, this is interesting, and my favorite thing is because it's Truman, who is a true man. Yep. Yeah, I got that one pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Christoph. Of Christ. Of Christ, of course. That's good. And then, like, his friend Marlon is a fish. (laughs) And that's, that's, that's Jesus. That's something. (laughs) What's his wife's name? What's Laura Um, Lily's name? Meryl? Meryl? Yes. Mary? Ah, oh man, this is, this is it. Oh, wow. This is, you know what? This is what, this is what, that's popcorn is. Is 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 switching to Uncovering. we're pivoting. Yeah. Yep. It's it's now that's <laughs> um <laughs> communion wafer. That? Film that's conspiracy. communion wafer. <laughs> communion wafer. <laughs> <laughs> and every every film is an allegory for Christianity. Yes. Yes. I mean you'd probably like your averages would be higher. <laughs> like you'd probably hit the mark more often than not <laughs> with that with most <laughs> kind of Western made films. Um, there are a lot of small details in this film. Speaking of the details of allegories to Christ, um, I liked in particular there was a vitamin D bottle. Did you see that one? I did not. Giving like That's... the the idea that like because they're in this fake world, they need to have more vitamin D because they're not getting actual sun. I think that was brilliant. Um, yeah, that one just stood out to me. But there's other ones like like um. See? The guy picking up rubbish, but there's no rubbish he's picking up, so he's just miming it. Or his friend stocking the the um, vending machine keeps taking it out because he's got enough. <laughs> so he's not looking away; he's taking it out and putting it back in. I think that's brilliant. That's great. Yeah, those subtle details. Wow. And just like how it was shot, like like the use of like vignetting and stuff, and kind of handheld like- cameras and. Yeah, I notice. I notice that like every time it's on Truman, it's it's shot like the TV. But if it's on another character, you sort of get like a wider, wider mm. angle. It's because uh, it's getting ready for that promo shot. Yes. Yeah, you got to promo that beer. <laughs> now that's oh, a beer. That's he's, that's he's great. Always like even when he's in emergency run mode, he's, still <laughs> he's got a six beer. pack. <laughs> like now, Marlon, that is a friend. It's like, <laughs> it's like, you know, you get like the figurines when you're a kid and it's always got some like random thing attached to it because it's part of the character. It's just... I would, I would buy the Truman Show action figure set. I reckon that'd be great. <laughs> get the little, the little mum from Two and a Half Men. The little mum from Two and a Half Men? Who was that? That was the mum. His oh, mum. His uh... mum was the mum from Two and a Half Men. That's go. a fun fact. There that is a fun fact. That's it. I got, I was, I got um, lots of fun facts. I was uh, not forgot it. Don't know what I was doing. Um, well, fun facts. Uh, the I liked that you know in the studio when they're they're filming it, they're doing the music live. Yes, that's very good. And one of the people playing it live was Philip Glass, who actually did the soundtrack. Mm. That's, that's more fun facts. That is. I, I, that, that, that fact is hitting me so fun. <laughs> <laughs> I did like the bit where like he's, I think he's against like the green backdrop of um, Jim Carrey's, it's like the night vision of Jim Carrey's character uh, sleeping. And um, when I say he, I mean Christoph. Uh, yes. And he's like kind of emotionally standing in front of him. Did he even, he might've even put a hand up. I can't really remember. Yeah, he goes. Yeah, <laughs> up against the screen. <laughs> um, and there's this like piano music playing. And then it tracks out and the guy's just playing the music there still. <laughs> I'm like, that's brilliant touch. And the first time they revealed like that, that, that the music's being played live is great as well. Because up until then I was kind of like, this music's a little bit strange. Like it's, <laughs> it's just like, it was just like predominantly piano music and stuff. And I'm like, this is kind of odd for a, for a, uh, a motion picture. And then they, they show that it's like, oh yeah, they're doing it live because they have to. Of course. I thought that was great. I, I do like that it's... I, I had a look. I think it's about 57 minutes into the film before it actually goes out to the wider world. 
like oh. that you find that you sort of actually find out that you know this is the people making the show. Right. So the first fifty-seven minutes is just Truman, Truman, Truman. Were there a few um, shots of the bar, the people watching in the bar? Before there, that? there was the people watching, mm. but it didn't go into like the the studio. It didn't like you don't meet Christoph until like an hour in, um, and that's uh, that's pretty big because I think he got nominated for an Oscar. Oh, really? Best Best Supporting Actor for Ed Harris, but Jim oh. Carrey did not get a nomination. Rough. It was his first sort of like dramatic role. I did read that Roger Ebert had to apologize to him because he said he'd never make a good film after Ace Ventura. Yeah, I mean, including I Ace think... Ventura, I think was the statement. <laughs> not, not like this is the best film. Ever. This, you can't top this. This is peak <laughs> cinema. This is the best thing you're ever going to do. And Ace Ventura Two comes out. Ah, no. Oh my god! Oh Roger my god! Lost his mind. Oh god. But yeah, because because Jim Carrey did do this, I think just after Liar Liar, maybe. Mm. Um, and it was a, it was a nice it was a nice change. I think there's only one sort of scene where he goes full Jim Carrey mode, where he's in the car and he's just screaming, and you're like, all right, turn yeah. it, turn it down a bit. <laughs> you're in an actual movie with real actors this time, Jim. I saw I saw the quote where it was like, um, Peter, we are the director had Jim Carrey as like his first choice um, because he was, I think he was saying he, he might've been at the blockbuster, you know, from, from episode three of that's popcorn. We talked a lot about <laughs> blockbuster, um, but he was like renting Ace Ventura. He's like, Oh, stuff it. I'll rent it or something. And then he watched it and he's like, well, this is someone new. <laughs> I'm like, that's the most <laughs> backhanded compliment. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely not, a thing I've seen before, <laughs> but then he, um, then he hired him. So it all worked out. It did. Um, I did also read, this was pretty much based on a, uh, Twilight Zone episode from the oh. late eighties. Um, and then I read the synopsis of that episode and it sounds exactly the same. Um, but I'm not going to let that take away from it. Cause I think any, you, you could, as we said earlier, like you could have done this movie a million different ways and the way they actually went with is probably the last one that anyone would have thought of. Mm. Um, like it's just sort of, it's, it's just happy and nice like the whole way through. Even like the moments where there's like a bit of, bit of danger, it's still not danger, danger. Mm. Yeah, it wouldn't get made now. I feel no. I feel like it would be either too serious or it'd be too kiddie. gritty or kitty. Yeah, <laughs> well, like, it's like it's one way or the other. I feel like there isn't that sort of like family yeah. drama, and and it makes you wonder like how many other films could have been like that were just like shonky films that just got lost in the nineties and could have been done better if it was in better hands and had sort of like a a different angle. Like everyone just sort of went, okay, The Matrix came out. Let's just make every movie a sort of dark sci-fi that looks like The Matrix. Mm. Um, but you could have gone down this other path and made sort of like a modern fairy tale and it, it would have become sort of critically acclaimed and remembered. Yeah, well, I mean, there is one film I can think of that could have been made differently and that film is Fatal Deviation, <laughs> which I, I don't think I'm ready to segue to it, but I, that would be a good opportunity. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, was there anything Was there anything else about Truman Show that you wanted to talk about? I did like the travel agent with the bib. Yes, that was really good. straight out of makeup. makeup. Yeah, straight out of makeup. Actually, like that's one of the things that I remember seeing in every other time I've watched this, this guy's just wearing a bib. She's definitely come straight from the dentist. <laughs> and it wasn't until this watch when I was like, ah, she didn't come from the dentist. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It's from makeup. Like, ah, okay. I, I did love the travel agent scene. Um, just all the, the shots in the, in the background, you know, there's the <laughs> plane getting struck by yeah. lightning. This could happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, this is, this is, 
um, my, my thought. And this is when you start watching it and you start picking it apart. But as I said, like this isn't a film where you even want to pick it apart just because it's nice. But if you were going to pick it apart, like why would the producers even introduce the idea to Truman that there's a, a whole world out there? Mm. Like it would have just been easier if right from day dot they said, this is the world. But then I guess they're like, I guess their aim was to follow someone's actual life. That's and true. Make they it wanted real. To make it yeah. relatable. I mean, they could have made him a little space bubble boy and put him in a big white room and then prod at him with like yeah, Godzilla okay. pens or something. That's good. And, you know, <laughs> they could have been like, well, this is a weird sci-fi thing. And then the police would come in and shut them down immediately. But I think, yeah, I think that, I mean, I don't know. I'm explaining away. <laughs> the point of the Truman Show. But yeah, I think they wanted a bit of uh, realism to the world. Yeah, I, that, that, that that makes sense. I didn't um, check, but um, is Fiji actually on the direct opposite side of America? Um, I don't... Yeah, it could be. I mean, the Pacific Ocean is quite big. I don't know how much truth there is to the fact that there are islands in Fiji that have never been... S- had foot feet set how do you say that sentence been set on foot by man had foot set on by man man has set foot on <laughs> hello <laughs> welcome to popcorn that we speak now in different it's, words it's, backwards it's a hard hard sentence to put together <laughs> and i challenge an audience to write to us with the correct way to say that <laughs> sentence this is gonna be like a document of people losing their minds in lockdown <laughs> <laughs> ah, see, the first thing that goes is grammar, and then, yep. <laughs> and then uh, you say things like "get start" or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did uh, before we did this episode. I was I was planning on making a joke somehow that there was a sequel to the Truman Show that was made. I haven't seen it. Um, it's called Capote. <laughs> There you go. I that's say, the joke. I thought you were going to say the was... Two Man Show, but ah, oh, see, that's good as well. But that's not a movie. No, it's not. Yeah, I mean, it's it's almost every movie, but <laughs> Rush <laughs> Hour, Two Man Show, uh, Codename Them Cleaner. Uh, no, I can't think of anything. <laughs> um, the the other thing that I will call out is that. Uh, similar to There Will Be Blood, this movie does look timeless because of how it's like all the, all the set design, costumes and stuff. Like it's not mm. set in any particular time. There's a little bit in the real world where you're like, yep, this is the 90s for sure. Mm. Um, but like the old maps that they're that, using and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but apart from that, I think the fact that Christoph is watching Truman and then he like puts his hand on his face and swipes down. If he did that now, it'll probably take him out of the video because it's a touch screen. <laughs> so yeah, be like, oh, like, shit. and he get yeah. mad because he's old. He doesn't understand technology, so he talked to like Paul Giamatti. And Paul Giamatti, like, I, I got no idea. And then um, <laughs> that's a great Paul Giamatti. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was really quite good. <laughs> I was looking um, up. The character names, um, Paul Giamatti and his like two IC or whatever don't have character names. They're just called like no. control room operators. No, I, I'm certain there was a scene where he, I think his name is Simeon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know He's why. a DJ now. And... No, it was, it was Simeon because I watched it with subtitles because I don't know, that's just a habit I'm in. And yeah, it said Simeon. And I was like, that's not a person's name. It is. I mean, bloody, uh, bloody, um, Lauren Sylvia gets two names. Yeah, she does. She does. Um, and I liked her character, but I feel like she had a lot of opportunity to tell Truman what was going on without having to save it for the very end when she's getting carted off and just turns into just yelling at him. And that doesn't make, if someone's just yelling at you, it's not real. It's all for you. Like, what, what are you talking about? 
but like maybe when they were in the library just having a quiet conversation she could have gone hey this is a tv show that you're on this is all fake i'm an actress that that might have been the opportunity there sylvia yeah but that just sounds like a meet cute like it sounds like (laughs) the start of a rom-com be like Hey, this is a TV show and I'm an actress. Ah, oh, of course you are. <laughs> I did like um, the um the flashback or like the it wasn't a flashback because it was when he was getting interviewed by Harry Shearer's yes. character. Mr. Burns' character. Um that uh they show like the other times people have uh come into the show before. <laughs> I particularly like the guy in the Christmas <laughs> in, the, in the gift. You're like, it's TV. <laughs> it's all TV. <laughs> it's great. Um, yeah, like how in again, if you if you were gonna pick it apart, how did that get to the props through the props department? Like, were they just carrying this big box? Like, yeah. what was meant to be in the box? Yeah. It like you expect it's Christmas in the Truman household, Burbank household. Um, at one point young Truman is going to see this giant box under the tree and go, Ooh, I want that. Yeah. So it wasn't meant to be empty. It's meant to be something in it. Maybe there was meant to be a man in it. Just not that man. (laughs) We got you a whole man. (laughs) (laughs) True man, meet man. (laughs) Now two man. (laughs) (laughs) There was something I read, like, um, I I can't remember if it was, part of the backstory or something for ed harris's character but that he had intentions to like spin it off as a sequel where it was starring truman's like own child ah and so like there, it's yeah like there is a creepy line where he says we are hoping for tv's first televised conception yeah like, that's why this yeah. this film is like a millimeter away from being the darkest film ever <laughs> because it's like you know what's this situation where you're paying like an actress to become his wife and then bear his child i presume and yeah. then like uh like forgiving the whole idea of that you just raised this person in a lie for like 30 years <laughs> it's just it's it's a bit it could be so dark there was a scene apparently in the cut script version where like um this guy is sexually assaulting a woman and Truman just ignores it and then walks away. And then the two actors stop, obviously, the scene and are just, like, bemused that he would, like, ignore it and not try and help or something. And I'm like, far out. That is that is a that, different film. <laughs> that is a totally different movie. Um, I Look, I'm, I am interested in the reboot. Maybe I'll just watch the Twilight Zone episode that it's based on. And, mm. and that'll... That'll do it. But yeah, as as I said, I don't think they could have done this film any other way that would make it better than the way it is. Agreed. That's, that's my my final comments. On... The Truman Show. Uh, do you recommend seeing The Truman Show? I do recommend. And actually, before I say this, my final comments, I had the soundtrack on this morning when I was making breakfast. Oh, that's And creepy. it is delightful. <laughs> I'm sure you all would have seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get? <laughs> yeah, we we're watching through your bathroom mirror as you're <laughs> drawing a spaceman around you <laughs> with soap. Yeah. Um, I feel like we need some sort of rating system on that's popcorn. Uh, if uh, small, medium, large, or jumbo popcorn <laughs> for, for the true. Um, yeah, that, that's a large. As uh, a maxi, maxi popcorn. Maxi popcorn. Agreed. Popcorn across the board for the Truman Show. But now uh, we'll have a short break. We'll go to the trailer for our next film. A sound. 
He can sense it before it happens. <laughs> he can vanish before you realize he's there. And he's the last person you'd ever expect. Expect the unexpected. In keeping with the ancient ways, there are no rules. Welcome back, Seagull. How did it go in Hong Kong? Everything is done. Good. I have another little job for you. Jeez! Change clothes! Listen, I don't want him in this tournament, right? And kill that mad monk. We don't want to look bad in front of Mike. We gotta do our job. Don't be lucky for someone else. Now look here! I don't think the girl needs help across the road. Why don't you boy scouts go and play in the woods? You little... <laughs> My father. Now I want to kill you. But what about Nicola? We'll get her back. You're very brave to be harassing young women. All right, welcome back to That's Popcorn. Uh, the second film we watched for 1998 was Fatal Deviation, which you would have just seen the trailer for or heard the trailer for if you were uh, listening. Um, or just seen and not heard if you closed your ears. Yeah, or maybe smelt. <laughs> that's the trailer. I mean, that's a pretty stinky trailer. That yeah, it's, it is. Sting. I feel bad if, you, if, you're, if you've got one of those cool smell devices that exist <laughs> it's a fatal deviated septum um ah, anyway fatal deviation is a uh i want to say an irish kind of yeah. irish martial arts film uh, um about a a guy who comes back to his home county i guess uh and um gets in trouble with the local irish mob who um, murdered his father and then he uh, joins, uh, he does a fight thing. He Yeah, he goes in a tournament. That's right. Yeah. And also he meets a monk that also trained his father. Yeah. And then there's like this big sort of like Yoda style. There's, a, there's a big long montage. montage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you think of what did you think of Fatal Deviation, James? Look, I I went into this with a very open mind and thinking, okay, whereas you know other bad films are bad because it's just about making money. When I read about this, it was because old mate Jimmy Bennett really wanted to like show off his kung fu prowess, and he thought this would be a great audition tape. So I'm thinking, yep, this is going to be made with love, even though it doesn't have a huge budget. It's, you know, a lot of care has gone into it. I could not have been more wrong. Mm. Um, it was within about 20 minutes, the, the charm of it being low budget and, and obviously not thought ahead um, had gone out the window and I just started getting angry. <laughs> I was, I was getting very <laughs> mad um, and, yeah, that any sort of nice ideas I had uh, just sort of went out the window. What did you think? Um, I thought it was it was delightfully trash. Uh, uh, you know what? It wasn't delightfully trash. It was just pretty trash. <laughs> um, it feels like 100 hours long, but it only goes – it doesn't even go for like an hour and 10 minutes because the last – 18 minutes or whatever of bloopers um, or credits. Yeah. Which are, I don't know if they're more entertaining. It, it almost seems like uh, crime footage because it seems like they, everyone almost died making this film. They were, they were like, the bloopers were so tacked on and there wasn't any like obvious cutaway. I thought the movie was still going and I was like, oh, these are flashbacks again <laughs> because half the film is already flashbacks. So the bloopers started. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is this guy that's still alive. Um, and it took me about 
two or three minutes to work out, oh, these are bloopers. Yeah. But they're just so not any different to the rest of the film that you wouldn't know. Yeah, and they're not bloopers. They're just like people going like, I'm not doing that again. Ow. Ow, that hurt. <laughs> yeah, that really hurt. Really I fell injured, and me. like, yeah. And then he like crashed the car and it seemed like that wasn't meant to happen. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just, it's it's wild. Um, I've written, I've got a note here where I've written just <clears throat> eye lines because it seems like no care was given for any of the eye lines. Sometimes it looks like they're looking straight at the camera. Um, but they're actually meant to be looking at another character. Yeah, there, there were shots where I'm like, I'm just watching a Zoom call. I did this <laughs> via Zoom because it's like he's just looking directly at the camera and it's like, whoa. Yeah, the only soundtrack is boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, <laughs> fatal deviation. And it, yeah, not only that is there's shots where there's two characters talking, but you don't ever get a wide shot of what the room looks like. And I'm pretty certain they weren't even in the same room. Like the lighting is different. They're, they're just like, all right, we'll go film your part of the conversation next Tuesday. We'll do your part on Friday. And it's going to work. Because I would. Doesn't. I would almost counter that by saying that I'm pretty sure every scene happens in the same room. Um, because there's a <laughs> shot where they're inside a caravan you go back to it later and suddenly that caravan, I swear to God, it is twice as big as it was before <laughs> and it has like white walls when it didn't have like that oh before God. and it's be- I reckon it's because of- oh, they probably just didn't have the caravan anymore and they needed this extra shot, which is hilarious to me that they did reshoots. But <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, it's bonkers. And but, okay, so... I know the hero of, this, of the film is Jimmy. Yes. Who's come out of reform school and then walked home a long way because there is like a 45 second shot of him walking around a corner. I'm like, <laughs> okay, get this. Um, and actually, I didn't mind the song that was playing, but um, I got tired of it when it was that same song appeared about five more times throughout the film. <laughs> And, and then, then he, he makes it back to his own, his old house. And then there's what feels like a half hour restoration episode of him just <laughs> fixing up his house. He, he Marie Kondo's it. Um, <laughs> Bobby you know, from this... Queer Eye comes out. <laughs> that's, uh, I don't understand why the house was so ransacked, but that doesn't matter. But he gets it looking nice. That's yeah, good that's, on him. That's something. But like, okay, so he's the hero, but. He's a jerk. Like, he's not a good dude. Like, you're meant to think he's a good guy because there's 50-year-old hoodlums in the supermarket who yes. are such hoodlums because they start juggling <laughs> potatoes. Clearly meant to be, like, 14-year-olds, but they're already bald. <laughs> they, are, they are so old. And then, and then I don't know, they start hassling, hassling the, the hot babe who doesn't get a name in the movie, just... She's known as the hot babe because that's what's in the Is she not? I don't think so. <laughs> also, is she the same one that he Yeah. Ends up dating? Yeah, it's the one person. Because I wasn't I wasn't clear on that because when there's the three of them at the ATM, I, I thought they're all the same person. <laughs> 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 but yeah, the funny thing about that scene is that um these hoodlums are like threatening to knock over the the um paper towel set up or whatever and then he comes over kicks it kicks the guy in the nuts and pushes him back through the paper towels so exactly so i mean is he meant to be a hero here because he's not and then later on when there's the two other hoodlums hassling the hot babe um and he says i don't think the girl needs help crossing the street um and then he beats him up and then he helps her across the street. And then, <laughs> exactly. Right. And then he's they like, get to the you. other side of the road and then he, goes, he says something. It doesn't even matter. And then because he obviously doesn't know how to finish a scene, he walks off in one direction down this wooded path and she goes the other direction back across the road. <laughs> like she didn't even want to cross the road. This whole thing, he beat up these two guys. Oh, it just makes no sense. It's because she's just so smitten. 
by God, she's definitely <laughs> in love. So impressive by his high kicks. And and then just because just in case you weren't sure if he was still a good guy or a bad guy, he goes into the bar and sits down and says, Beer. <laughs> And I'm like, that's not what a hero says. That's I don't care a- what country you're in. <laughs> no one just comes in and just sits down having, like, he's not a local. He's not, like, yeah. he's not well known. He just sits down and like, beer. I well, dude, that's I like my mate that works at the bar. They'd be like, no, say <laughs> nice say, say please, yeah. Or what kind of beer? <laughs> that, <laughs> yes, that too. That, he also says to that guy, f*** your gun. <laughs> <laughs> and and then oh, just all right. And then there's the weird montage with the monk, and he's getting taught how to do fighting. Mm-hmm. Even though it was already set up that he was a great fighter, he still has to learn fighting from the monk. Yeah. Um, and then that montage is intercut with scenes of him on a date, like horse riding with the hot babe. Yeah. And then. It, it finishes strawberries and, and seven off. oranges. <laughs> they're sitting, they're sitting there, and they're having a picnic. And he goes, "Why don't you tell me a bit about yourself?" Like at this point, they've gone on like fifteen dates, <laughs> including <laughs> motorbike riding. They've been horse riding. They've gone to the fair. They've done so much. And he goes, "I mean, he doesn't even know her name." Oh yeah, well, I mean, it's hard to learn about someone when you're doing bumper cars for about four days. <laughs> on psychedelics <laughs> yes right <laughs> it's, it's like that scene got like crazier and crazier as it went on and like everything starts blurring and i'm like am i watching like a gas it's What's got the circus music it's like <laughs> it's all blurred it's like oh someone's drugged the candy corn <laughs> But then it cuts away. Like, nope, that was just a test of Adobe Premiere <laughs> effects. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're using the whole pack here, guys. Yeah. To change the colors, put on the motion blur. This is going to be a trip. The, 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 so the bad guy is this mob boss um, and his son, who is like James McAvoy light type character. <laughs> With that great line, he's like, you you made me look, <laughs> what else? I've forgotten it already. You made me feel bad, and that's not good. No, you made me look bad. <laughs> you made me look but bad, does... and that's not good. <laughs> I mean, true, truer words true. have never been spoken, really. Yeah. Uh, he, he ends up being, I think, I mean, it's hard to say, but I feel like he ends up being the main villain for most of the film, to the point that I thought the film had ended. They're back on a picnic. And then all of a sudden, he's got the gun in his head, in his face again, which I'm pretty sure is the same gun from the bar. You don't want to, you know, buy too many props. And then he just like, does he kill him? I think he does. I think he just... He does. Let, let me tell you, because I've got it written down here because it's, it's, it's great. So he's about to kiss the hot babe and he gets a gun to the head. And <laughs> the mob boss says, you killed my son. Now I'm going to kill you just as I killed your father. And then Jimmy does a wah, wah, and then yep. he's holding the gun. He goes, you killed my father. Now I'm going to kill you just like I killed your son, which is Boom. the best line flipping yeah. I've ever heard. That's brilliant. It's like Dr. Seuss. But it does feel like they forgot that that character existed and they're like, oh, we finished our oh. film. We need to add this extra scene in to resolve this as well. And then we go to bloopers. The people yeah. are going, getting hurt. Um, I, I do have a big cr- question and maybe you can answer this. Why? What well, was with the scene with the naked man in the bathtub? Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> the the like, like poor man's Danny McBride um, <laughs> comes out in his cowboy hat. And like just undies and goes over to this bathtub. And I'm like, no, no, he's not going to. And yet he backs himself, gets in the bathtub and then has like a full frontal, like yeah. nudity scene, which I mean, this camera, this, um, this film was shot on like a Coke bottle. So <laughs> like, 
uh, you could argue whether full frontal means anything in this circumstance, but like, what's the point <laughs> is the bigger question. Like, who is he? Who is he? What? We've never what? seen him before, right? Yeah, there's, there's nothing there. Why is his bathtub so far away from his caravan? <laughs> um, <laughs> why is he wearing a cowboy hat in the bath? You know what? <laughs> Maybe that's what he wears when he's about to watch a Truman Show. <laughs> it's the same guy. It's the same, same guy. Same character. Um, yeah, it's amazing. Um, also, the, the, to- the tournament. Um, we go to the tournament, and so there's all these people fighting. We're seeing them fight one by one, essentially. Um, there's there's one guy I like in particular who's like the big dude, um, wearing almost like I think he's like wearing like a leotard or something, or it's only got like one um, singlet thing a bit like a fred flintstone type deal <laughs> he's he's the best clearly he's just like oh, way yeah. into it um but then we go to another scene is it like which i think was meant to be a flashback but it's not clear because it's just like they're, they're elsewhere it's another time of day or whatever and then we go back to the tournament so it almost looks yes. like the tournament happened over two days which it clearly didn't but also no. the tournament happens at day because we escape the tournament and it's like full daylight <laughs> which is a bit of a weird time, I think, for a martial arts tournament. But, you know, I'm not an expert. Yeah, that's a, I, I don't know what happens in Ireland. Like, I know it's, it's quite far north in, in the summertime. It has a longer rate of sun, so it could have been 10 p.m. That's right. Because it's the, the land of the forever sun. That's the other name for Ireland. <laughs> that's, what it, that's what it translates to <laughs> yes, in martial arts Irish. That's um, right. Can I can I just talk about the note that he receives? Yes. The the like threatening <laughs> note that he receives. <laughs> I can't remember how he how does he receive it again? Is how does he receive it? Does it just come to his door or something? I I I have no Did idea. Someone how. hand it to him. I feel like that could have happened. Yeah, I mean there was there was that earlier scene where he gets the invitation to the tournament. And he's at his house with his girlfriend. And it's like, so a monk comes to the door, gives him this like A4 clip art printout of like, come to the tournament. And then he shows it to her and she's like, oh, the tournament. Oh, wow. How did you get this? I'm like, you're sitting there. And then he looks back and the monk's gone. And he's just like, oh, I, don't know. I don't know where he went. Oh, he's a monk. Um, but he... What I what I am trying to get to is he gets another note and it's ominous. It's a threatening note. He opens it up and it says just three simple words, loose or else. <laughs> oh, it's just, yeah, it's I, art. I just, I didn't understand the motivation of anyone in the film to do anything that they did. Um, I, I did like that scene where uh, when just after he saves the hot babe from the two men trying to walk her across the street that she didn't want to go across, um, she comes over to his house and brings him a pie. And the pie is not in a container or anything. He's like, I made you this pie. <laughs> yeah, and just gives it behind to him. her back. And, and he's just holding it. He's like, thanks. <laughs> and it's just this obviously he's like, I, <laughs> and goes, can I see you again? She goes, I don't know. Can you? And then walks out. I hated that so much. And then he's just holding this pie for what seems like an eternity as (laughs) it's sort of like, as as she like leaves the room, he's like uh, staring at the door. Yeah, because she she came over on her bike, didn't she? So I don't know where that pie was. (laughs) (laughs) Perched. Somewhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, to the point of him just staring off into the distance, uh, this film could have been like a minute long if someone edited it properly because there's so many shots. that <laughs> There's one shot where he's visiting the mob boss. Um, threateningly, like he was, t- he was threatened by these dudes to come visit the mob boss and the mob boss wants to give him a job and he's like, no or something. I can't remember. He had a line. Um. He's like, I'll think about it or something. I can't remember. Um, but the scene starts with like the door behind him closing 
and they're kind of just like standing on the spot. And I, I feel like they go <laughs> like <it's, laughs> as if they've just walked in. <laughs> they clearly haven't. And it's, it's just, you know, just cut the edit just a little bit. Yeah. And there's like <laughs> bizarre, bizarre scene after the, uh, the bar fight. Um, which, by the way, has the jauntiest music in the world. <laughs> this big angry bar fight with, you know, drunken people fighting on a pool table. And you're like, yeah. It's so happy. <laughs> I was like, how is that? And that music wasn't used in the bloopers later on. Like, that would have at least identified bloopers, but no, they can't use the scary bar fight scene no, music. It was like the bloopers. Inception music in the, the bloopers. <laughs> There's a scene directly after that where, like, the baddie goes back to the mob boss's house and the mob boss is decorating, like, flowers. He's doing, like, a flower <laughs> display thing and it's, like, 10 seconds. And I'm like, is, is this YouTube? Have I accidentally clicked next midway through this movie and I'm, I'm watching how to do flower decoration? All right, now, I'll show you how to do flower decoration. <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. Then- and then, because then, like straight after that shot of him doing the flowers, and then cuts to his face front on, and he goes, yes. "What the? F-? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those eye line shots where it's just like, where are they looking all the time? It doesn't make any sense. Oh, geez, it's wild. Oh man, and the in that bar scene, the the bartender, not the bartender, the the bar, well, one of the bartenders, whatever, like spills the beer on the guy. Which is clearly like was set up five minutes before he even got to the table to the point where it looks like he's going. Gotta hit that beer. Gotta hit that beer. Gotta hit that beer. Yes, got it. <laughs> Job done. <laughs> Such a it's, crap it's film. Wild. I, um, the the James McAvoy Light character was um, actually a celebrity. Um, he was in the band Boyzone. No, was he? Are you pulling my leg? I am not pulling your leg. Uh, his name is. Hold on, I've got it here, and 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 I worked this out because when you look it up on IMDb, his is the only name that has like anything attached to it. Um, actually, that's a lie because I've got a fun fact. Um, but uh, what is his name? Mickey or Mikey Graham from Boyzone who is in all the boys' own music videos, which would be like if we made a film and had one of the guys, a martial arts film, Australia's first martial arts film, and we asked one of the guys from Human Nature <laughs> to be to be the baddie. So wait, um, what came first? Boy, wasn't Boys' Own big in, like, 1998? Yeah. 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 That's that's the biggest thing. And look, I did I did say that you know it was um, one of the only films, one of the only actors who had other things. But our main man Jimmy Bennett has been in many other films after this. Yeah, like, I mean, like lot. they're all kind of like stunt related. Most notably, Beverly Hills Chihuahua. Did he do stunts for the Chihuahua? He was the he was the Chihuahua stand-in, which uh, would have been awkward because he's a solid guy. He's big. His shoulders are Oof. like the width of him standing up. And he can do that 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 Van Dam splits across the kegs or whatever. Yes. Um, actually, you can tell he's a big Van Dam fan because in his house he has. Just photos on the wall of Van Damme. So <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> I, I Wait, don't know. Maybe so is the is the girlfriend's name Barbie? <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Um, it's, it's either that or it's Bank Machine Lady Number One. <laughs> 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 oh, that's great. Um, but look, we're talking about this like. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, we are. We are talking it's, like that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's not like it, I I I couldn't even say it's one of those. It's so bad. It's good movies. Um, it's I really I struggled to watch it all the way through. Um, the fight scenes are 
bad and as i said like there's no motivation for anyone the hero is a jerk i kind of liked barbie or bank machine lady number one just because (laughs) i don't know she was she was doing the best that she could and she's like hey would you like to try a strawberry like this this man has never had a strawberry and then he eats the strawberry goes hmm hmm like (laughs) these are those things i've heard so much about at reform school (laughs) <laughs> so glad I've finally been able to try one. Wait, so he left. His his dad died when he was a kid, right? Yeah. So then, did he go away to school then? Yes, I. So I was he so. continuing his training at school? Well, did I miss? I guess. It? I don't I know. I do love the kid montage though, <laughs> where the dad's just like throwing the kid into a haystack. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Uh, yeah, and those montages—it wasn't clear enough as to which one was him. So there's like the scene, like it starts off mm. with like these this kid being bullied, and you're like, so he's the bully? Like, <laughs> yeah. Which, which, yeah. which one is it? And the kid comes home. He's clearly having the time of his life. Yeah, <laughs> so it's just like I got a bully. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not it's not great. Um, the, uh, the shooting, the shooting scene at the end where just everyone's shooting, uh, yes. it's just like close up, not even close up, like medium shots of people just shooting nowhere in particular, which I have you seen Garth Marenghi's dark place? <laughs> yes. It just reminded me of that. <laughs> it's just that. the random shots of people just going, poof, poof, just like <laughs> nowhere, nowhere at all. Um, but yeah, I think that's. That's pretty much all I have to talk about with Fatal Deviation. I um yeah I, I I couldn't say anything else. I mean, there's yeah there's three songs on the soundtrack, none of which fit in the scenes that they're in. Um, it's it's terrible. It's on YouTube. You can watch it. Oh, YouTube. I did I did love the, the very start where it's got the production house title. Like where it's like rising some productions, and this should have just said it all because it's like left justified, but not even like yes. it's 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 not centered <laughs> on it. It's just like oh my god, this I'm so angry. Um, yeah, and then nobody. The credits, the credits are like rolling at the start, which like I know that that used to be more commonplace, maybe. In the not past, in we have, we have, not in 1998. We saw another film from 1998 <laughs> that didn't do that. And it just like I started watching. I'm like, oh, did we? Is that the whole film? Did we? Did we? Did I fall asleep it? already. <laughs> <laughs> I just like woke up and it was code name the cleaner again. Um, yeah, James, would you recommend Fatal Deviation? No, not even as a so bad it's good. This is funny. Let's throw spoons at the cinema screen. Yeah, I, I, the room, the room. I feel field. like I've I, I wasted wasted my life. Uh, if you were buying Fatal Deviation at the candy bar, what what item would it be? It is a uh, it is <laughs> a chop top that has been <laughs> dipped into pebbles. <laughs> Just like when you go to one of those landscaping things and they've just got this massive big pit of tiny little stones. It's a chop top that's dipped in that. Oh, no. And then some blood and bone as well. Oh, not uh, blood and it's, bone. It's, 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 it stinks. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I would, What's your candy bar? I would, um, yeah, I would not recommend Fatal Deviation. I think at the candy bar, this would be a request for refund. Um <laughs> It's no, there's no item, there's no item there that I think would suffice it. Maybe like a shitty toy that's been melted to the dashboard of a crap car or something. Um, no, Fatal Deviation, I'd say deviate away from this or else oh, it'll be cute. fatal. There will be Fatal Deviation. That, that makes the most sense of the title out of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I think if if you are interested in any of the crap that we've talked about, just like load it up on YouTube and try and find 
the like one yeah, minutes of that scene. Just don't just watch it though. Through. Just don't watch the whole film. <laughs> it's too long and it's doesn't like it's it's actually not too long, but it feels too long. <laughs> Yeah, you'll you'll be sad afterwards. Like you'll you'll get through it. And you go, how did I get to this stage in my life? Because that's because that's what I did. I, I started thinking maybe this podcast idea isn't for me. <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> I'm not maybe it. I'm not cut out for this. Yeah. So that was uh you know I mean that was it was 1998 and it was hard to make good films in 1998 except That's for it. all the one that we did watch. Um, <laughs> look, if, if if this was if this was made, I mean, in in today's day and age, this would be a 10 second TikTok video of <laughs> of Jimmy just doing some some kung fu, you know, doing the splits over some kegs, punching a bag. That would be the entire thing. 1998 yeah. had to make a full length movie. Yeah. And to be fair, we've got access to like amazing technology and stuff now to make good low budget films. So we are spoiled, but still don't recommend it. Uh, James? Yes. That's been Fatal Deviation and The Truman Show. Everyone that isn't James, like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> can I Can I do that though? What, what can you do that or do you want to like do can i can i like comment and subscribe yeah go for it i don't know okay i just wanted to make sure i wasn't i wasn't banned if i leave a comment you know, he's he's pretty no. funny i liked that bit he said about the pie <laughs> i like i bloody i really Darren liked Aronofsky's that he's back at it again I really, <laughs> I really liked that joke that he made about truman show 2 capote <laughs> I reckon uh, uh, if if I make that comment, I'm gonna like that comment. I feel like I'm gonna be emailing you saying, "Hey James, you've got a fan. <laughs> yeah. His name is James." <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I've been rich. I've been James. Jimmy Bennett is my name. <laughs> <laughs> James. Again. James. James. Jimmy, Jimmy Bennett. Bennett. Man in Bath. <laughs> <laughs> Code name, man. <laughs> oh god. All right, that's been that's popcorn. That's popcorn. Hey. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> that's the end of the show. Goodbye. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> Download something. Follow us on Twitter. We have no followers except for me. <laughs> so I didn't know we were on Twitter. Oh, yeah, get the birds out. Get the birds out. Get the birds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's popcorn. Bye.